All right, as I said yesterday, I get a phone call from 3AW in Melbourne, Neil Mitchell. It's one of the biggest, highest rating talk shows in Australia, uh, talk radio shows in Australia. They wanted to talk to me about the issue of the new algorithm or the new uh, method of, of prioritising people on waiting lists in Auckland for uh, government paid surgery and the fact that ethnicity is going to be a factor, one of five factors taken into account with this tool. Um, it is making news in Australia. He said big news over there and big news here, uh, this new uh, process. And clearly uh, big political news ahead of an election. Uh, Marama Davidson says getting into this issue was race baiting and dog whistling. And uh, some of that accusation, of course, levelled against the National Party, which says it will get rid of race or ethnicity as a determinant or part of the determinants in deciding where you are on a hospital or a, a surgical waiting list. Joining us now is uh, the National Party's health spokesperson, Dr Shane Retti. Uh, Shane, welcome to the platform. Nice to have you with us. Good morning, Sean. Good to speak with you. All right. Is this, as Marama Davidson told the House yesterday before she got ejected by the Speaker, are you race baiting? Are you dog whistling? Uh, no, she is just simply wrong. And remember, I'm one of those rare things, a Māori doctor, uh, so I actually have the ability... Well, hang on, hang on, Shane, you're, you're not a rare thing. Uh, Māori get special compensation and have to have lower grades to get into medical school than other people. Uh, Māori doctors in number are a rare, a rare resource, and uh, I would suggest that I've seen more patients than Marama Davidson ever has. And so what I'll say to you is that clinical decision-making should never be based on race. It should only be based on the health need you see in front of you sitting across the desk. There is. Look, it's a hard, and I'll tell you why I find it hard, because if we were to look proportionately at health outcomes and statistics in New Zealand, Pacifica and Māori people don't do as well by ethnicity as other groups. So is it accurate to say it's got nothing to do with it? When we do have some figures there that might suggest that it does. Oh, the figures are absolutely correct. There are inequities for Māori and Pacifica, and there have been for a number of years, uh, but that does not change the fact and not change the principle that ethnicity should not be at the forefront of clinical decision-making. Look, this came to me actually a month ago. So I know it was news on Monday morning, but a month ago, uh, clinicians came to me with grave concerns. Uh, I generated a range of ministerial questions, and I was asking what the equity adjuster was composed of, what the relative weightings of each component was and what the scope was. Uh, she came back telling me the five parts to the equity adjuster. Uh, mysteriously, she said the ethnicity weighting was dynamic and would change day by day. No one understands what the heck that means. And uh, she said to me that it was going to be applied to surgical weighting lists. The next step would be those waiting for first specialist assessment and then it would have a national rollout. Okay. Actually, Shane, I, ha I hate to tell you this, for non-elective surgeries and procedures in the Capital Coast area, this has been in place for a couple of years. Uh, so actually in Northland uh, in April 2020, uh, they were trialling something of this type also, uh, but it was only a trial. It wasn't a formalised algorithm uh, like the uh, equity adjuster is. Okay. My question is, let's put the politics aside, let's put whether it's race baiting or anything aside. Does factoring ethnicity in, in this basis, in this selection and ordering waiting list, is there any scientific proof that it will improve overall health outcomes for New Zealand as a whole? Uh, I have seen none, and furthermore, if you look at the other components to the equity adjuster, uh, if you look at rurality, and particularly if you look at the deprivation level, we actually already pick up the most vulnerable without yeah. needing ethnicity. Yeah, and, and so it, it puzzles us all. Well, why do we need ethnicity there at all? We're picking up the vulnerable groups in the other parts uh, of the equity adjuster. Those who are on the wait list for longer yeah. tend to be Māori and Pacific. Those who are disadvantaged. Well, heck, the uh, the algorithm already covers that. So, so why then is ethnicity there? Yeah, there's also this Shane, this kind of overall thing that's said in mainstream media. It's like climate change in some ways. Um, Māori have trouble accessing healthcare. Uh, did, are doors stickier for them? Do they find it more yes, difficult that is, that is. going down to the doctors? It's just taken as read that Māori have difficulty accessing healthcare. What? Because they're Māori? 
Uh, no, if you follow, this, this actually talks to cultural competence and inequities. Let's follow the pathway from referral through to these surgical waiting lists. So you go to see your general practitioner and to get on the referral list there's a certain number of points and tick boxes if you like uh, that you need to have. To have that you need the right people in the room, you need the right questions, you need the right answers. So there's a cultural competency part to getting that information before you even get on the list. I send a referral, the hospital sends a note back to you that presumes you've got a stable mailing address and you can receive uh, your appointment. You get your appointment, this then presumes that uh, you have transport, this then presumes uh, that it's going to be in hours that don't conflict with your work. Uh, there's a whole lot of... Not yeah, just but none Māori, of these I've things are cultural. based on the colour of your skin, Shane. I can, this is just exactly what I was saying. Uh, they, these are, uh, are things that cross several cultures. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, a number of people will, will have this. But these are the sort of hurdles. You asked what are the hurdles. These are the sort of hurdles that for Māori and Pacifica particularly, they yeah. would struggle with. Let me give you an example. If I'm seeing a consultation for referral on diabetes, uh, I'm going to need to indicate whether this person has applied themselves to dietary change before they might even get on the list. Yeah. They may have the person in the room, but the cultural competency to it says, yeah, but that person probably doesn't do the cooking. He or she may not know that answer, particularly he. I actually need the family cook in the room to answer that question. That's cultural competency right there, just understanding that. Yeah. All right. So you're saying this, will you throw out the whole system of prioritising waiting lists or will you just take the ethnic component out of this where you to become government? Uh, so what we'll do is we'll take the ethnic part out, the principle of health need, what's called your CPAC score, yep. which is a, a, a number of points you add up depending on, on yep. your level of need. That will be the first determinant. And then other things are contributors. So uh, how long you've been on the waiting list, uh, yep. that's obviously, obviously a contributor. But the principle, the first principle uh, will be what is your health need, agnostic to everything else. And your race will not be an issue. It will not be a feature. Okay, geez. Look, that, I think for many New Zealanders that is music to their ears because I think there has been a visceral reaction in particular to, to this. I would ask you, though, the National Party in general, will you apply this not just in health but in everything else? Uh, look, we have this general principle that it is need. As I say, I can speak from a, a health perspective uh, that it is need regardless of what uh, your ethnicity is. Okay. Uh, that we will focus our resources. And, and okay, but would you apply so the same principle, the same fundamental principle to say democracy? I mean, for example, Māori wards on councils. Uh, we've already made positions on that one person, one vote. All right, okay. Um and what do you say to the Marlama Davidsons of this world? What do you say to the Chris Hipkins who says this is perfectly justifiable? He was on, albeit with a compliant state-funded Māori broadcaster yesterday, Moana Maniapoto, saying, oh, this makes perfect scientific and logical and health sense what we're doing and I stand by the policy. What do you say to him? Uh, no, he was already backtracking on uh, television yesterday. Uh, he realised how wrong this was. We understand that half his caucus are aghast. And uh, he's already trying to soften it by instructing Asha Beryl to relook at it. Uh, I would be surprised if this progressed to a national rollout because they realise they've just got Do you this believe wrong. the government's going to back down what, on what, this? What it, does do, what it does do, Sean, is it sends a signal. Uh, they've realised they've hit a political uh, quagmire. And so they may well pause it, uh, as the words are, quote, unquote, uh, but it shows their intention and their signal. Give them another chance, and sure as heck, this will come in. OK, so you're saying it's, it's a bit like three waters. They just press pause before they push play again were they to win the election. Yep, they, they realise that ideologically they haven't quite got this right and there's voter backlash. Uh, so they'll pause it with some nice words, but you watch this come back in if they get another run. Yeah. Ah, Shane, what sort of feedback are you getting on the campaign trail? And I'm going to make this observation about you and your party, is that uh, Chris Luxon seems very, very reluctant to, if you like, go full David Seymour on issues around race. And David Seymour is carving out a niche probably somewhere to the right or slightly more extreme on issues of race or race discrimination and ethnic issues in New Zealand than Christopher Luxon. Christopher Luxon often criticised for being woke, actually, for being labour and drag. Uh, you, and, and I'll be honest, because of your ethnicity, 
Uh, and the fact that you are a Maori doctor probably have more licence than most people in the National Party to climb in on these issues. Do you think National's been too, ti been too timid in addressing these issues? Uh, no, I think it's a, uh, a big statement and a true and accurate statement for us to say we will only base, base clinical health decisions uh, on your need and not on your ethnicity, and you've heard Chris repeatedly say that. So we're very strong uh, in this sort of area. To come back to your point, yes, uh, I am in a position um, to offer views around uh, the interface of ethnicity and to our Māori uh, in health. And uh, yes, some of my colleagues who might be accused of being racist or various other things, that never comes my way, they wouldn't dare. They wouldn't dare because I'd simply say to them, oh yeah, how many free Māori clinics on Marae have you run? Can you beat the two decades I've done? Then tell me something I don't know. So I am in a position to offer a view that's kind of hard to contest unless you've done more than I have. Yeah, if you've done, as they say, the mahi. Um, Shane, I thank mm. you very much indeed for joining us this morning. Interesting discussion. We're getting a lot of feedback on it. I'm sure we'll get lots of calls on it. So thank you for your time uh, today. That is uh, Dr My Shane. Pleasure. Well. Cheers. That is Dr Shane Reddy, the National Party's uh, health spokesperson. Um, pretty clear. Pretty clear. We're going to get rid of this. And he believes that Chris Hopkins... And he did this softy, softy interview with Moana Maniapoto yesterday. He believes he's walking, that Chris Hipkins is going to walk this back. As I said, I was surprised uh, to get the call from 3AW in Melbourne yesterday from Neil Mitchell. Apparently that is up, that interview, on uh, Spotify.